Hello and welcome to another Out of Spec Reviews video and welcome to my house where uh, I wanted to talk about how the BMW iX charges. Now, we are talking specifically about the BMW iX with the big battery pack. In America, we only get this battery, but in Europe, you can actually get a smaller battery pack in the iX 40 trim. Here, we're only talking about the 50 and the M60. For those who don't know, the BMW iX is BMW's sort of large-ish electric SUV. It competes with the Mercedes EQS, the Audi e-tron, the Tesla Model X, etc. It uses a roughly 400 volt system architecture, so we're not talking 800 volts, but it is one of those few 400 volt cars that pretty much maxes out the spec for CCS. It goes all the way up to 500 amps, and it holds 500 amps for a really long time. As with every electric car, I like to take a look at how it charges. Of course, we've already seen how far this go this car goes on a charge, which is insanely long. It did 340 miles at 70 miles an hour, and it is the least efficient BMW iX you can buy. It's the big wheels with the M60 trim. The uh, 50 trim, well, I should say, it did 340 miles. EPA was 274, so just... A, an amazing car, but I've actually done a zero to 100% DC fast charging test. And after this test, I took the car on a 3000 mile long road trip and I'll share some of my experiences of how this car is as a road tripper, how the charging curve works in real life. And then of course tips if you own one of these as to what I think you should charge it to on a road trip. <laughs> So we are talking charging tests for the BMW iX, and we're talking about how long it takes to go from zero to 100%. We are also looking at sort of the curve of the charging because uh, what I've done is I actually did a range test with the iX, and as I mentioned, goes really long distance, 340 miles on a charge. What I want to help figure out is where should you charge this to on a road trip? And we're going to look at how it handles thermals. You see the iX is one of the very few 400 volt class of vehicles that can also accept 500 amps. So it's really maxing out the amount of current that the CCS connector is specced for, at least here in North America. Um, so basically what I did was I ran the car all the way out to zero, pretty gently preconditioned the car to the charging station. By the way, I didn't have any thermal issues with the iX overheating on my road trip with constant rapid charging sessions one after another. Um, but also to help with that was the car is so efficient and with such a big battery pack that you can actually go pretty far in between charging legs. And so that helps with thermals, of course. So uh, let's talk about what we have to work with. We have 105 kilowatt hour usable pack, 111 installed capacity. As with all of our charging tests, when you look at the total charging uh, energy delivered, it's going to be a lot more than usable because there's always losses. And the, because this car holds 500 amps for so long, there are a lot of losses when charging. And uh, what we should do is just analyze the curve. I'm gonna walk you through plugging it in dead. And then of course, we'll talk a little bit more as it fills up. But let's start this thing as soon as it tipped down to 0%. Great ambient temperature is starting in the 80 degree temperature range, but nighttime. And so everything was pretty cool to the touch. Nothing got overheated. It was a pretty good test. So let's take a look. Connection successful. Three, two, one. Starting. Plugged in. And then you can see it's just ramping up, ramping up until it hits 500 amps. And you'll see that delivered on that EVgo screen in the bottom left-hand corner. And we're basically just sitting at 500 amps. Now, pack voltage is at about 366 volts, but you'll see as we add energy to the battery pack, six kilowatt hours delivered now, as we add more and more energy to the battery pack, pack voltage will increase. And it will increase quite drastically, especially down low, which is just the nature of lithium packs. As pack voltage increases and we're asking for the same amount of current, our total power will be able to go up. Now the iX is rated for 195 kilowatt peak charging. And you can see here, we haven't quite hit it. It's because we actually need to get some energy in that pack because there's not, it can't do more than 500 amps. That's just what CCS is spec to. 
Uh, we can see here, let's see, we're six minutes in, we're at 16%. This is a vehicle you wanna pull into a charging station as low as possible with. And what's really nice about the iX, it has a great navigation system. Its route planning isn't so good, but the navigation system will precondition the car to a charger and it will let you know the percentage on arrival pretty accurately. I've been pretty impressed with this. Man, we're into this thing for nine minutes now, it's still doing 500 amps. That's a long time to do basically at this point 10 minutes at max current, just pegged all the way. And so you can see pack voltage is coming up. We're about to hit 195 kilowatts coming up here shortly. We're still at 28%, 29% in 10 minutes. Not that bad. When we look at class leading charging cars, there we go, peak of 195 kilowatt being delivered, 196 now. When we look at class leading cars like Tycon that have an 800 volt system architecture in terms of charging, I'm actually testing a Lucid Air here pretty soon as well. Um, these cars can request less current and with higher voltage, you, they can actually get from zero to 50% in the case of the Tycon in 10 minutes flat. So it's been almost 15 minutes. We've tapered off of max power at about 37% or so uh, in about 15, 14 minutes or so. We're, we're only at 40%. And so really the benefit of an 800 volt system architecture, I made a whole video about this this week, is the charging times. And the iX would benefit massively. You can see we're down to a 400 amp request, which is 160 kilowatts. Forgive some of the screens turning on and off here throughout. We uh, yeah, just had to like keep opening doors and stuff and didn't catch all of it. But eventually through everything will pop up. Um, and you know, so this is a car that, okay, 160 kilowatts is still pretty good. We're at 400 volts at about 50%. So it's a 400 volt nominal pack structure, more or less. Uh, you know, just adding the power gently, 144 kilowatts at 50% here. And 50% came in 19 minutes. So it took about 20 minutes to go from zero to 50 uh, versus the class leading technology, which is about 10 minutes in Ionic 5 EV6 to go from zero to 50%. Now you have to forgive some of the screens here for a moment. I didn't realize that they were off, but they'll pop back up here in a second. You can see everything wakes back up and there we go. Uh, we're at 55% in 22 minutes. So let's uh, basically break down this charging curve from what I'm seeing right now. This would be called a constant current, constant voltage battery pack architecture, or I should, excuse me, charging strategy, similar to it. Basically what that means is it says, hey, give me all the juice you can give me until my battery pack hits a maximum peak charging voltage. And then I'm just gonna back down the current to hold my pack voltage at pretty much the maximum. Now that's how I like to see charging uh, done because it's quite simple for us to reverse navigate and to figure everything out. It's not always the best way to do charging if you're trying to target the fastest possible charging times, but it's the easiest to tune for. So you can see the voltage isn't increasing that quickly, but we're backing off the current to basically hold it there around 410 volts. And it will just fall off these ledges as we go, but it's pretty good. Now, I've also tested the BMW i4. I don't know if that video has been posted yet. And I'm soon to test the BMW i7. And BMW tells me that the i7 is gonna be a much smoother uh, charging curve at the end. You can see here, we get these ledges that the iX falls off. And that to me just seems like a little bit of lazy tuning. Um, you know, like I said, if you do a real CCCV charging curve, uh, constant current, constant voltage, you can update this in real time and just dynamically back off the, the charging power. That's how Tesla does it. Uh, and, but they have some other factors in there, cold weather, hot weather. I will say that every time I plugged into a charger that could give me full power to the iX, the car was never the limitation. The battery pack seems to accept full power in a wide temperature range. Now, again, I didn't have it in very cold temperatures, so I'd be really interested to see how this car does in cold temperatures, but 75% state of charge in 35 minutes. I think BMW claims 10 to 80 in 38 minutes or very close to that. And it's actually faster than what BMW claims either way. So I think it's a very, very okay charging car. To me, 200 kilowatts, there was a, a period in time where I didn't plug in dead. I plugged in at one of the new EA stations and it gave me 202 kilowatts to the car before it tapered. So a little bit more than we saw in this test. But again, I started with a little bit higher state of charge and it just bumped the juice a little bit more. And I thought that was kind of interesting. It probably peaked over 500 amps for a short period of time. There we go, 80% in 39 minutes, 38 minutes. And uh, this is where it really starts to fall off a ledge. 
This is a car you really don't want to charge past 80%. We're down to 82 kilowatts, which on a big battery pack with a big buffer is okay, but it's not quite as good as e-tron. So this car's main competitor, the Audi e-tron, just sits at 150 kilowatts straight through. However, this is a much more efficient vehicle. It is a, honestly, a better charging vehicle, even though it doesn't have such a flat curve. I actually think this works much better on a road trip because this car at about 50% state of charge is very close to our e-tron at 100 state of charge i mean that's the difference we're talking about here it's pretty insane a lot of people have asked are we going to trade in our e-tron for an ix and honestly if if we use that as our main road tripping car yes but we don't the e-tron very rarely leaves town we have a model 3 that we need to put miles on we have our rivian we have model s we're lucky we have other cars but if this was our one electric car yeah, I'd probably swap our e-tron for this thing. I really enjoy driving it. And you'll see those videos coming on out of spec motoring. And I'll also shoot a comparison for this channel of my IX versus e-tron. But overall, uh, what I found myself doing on a road trip was basically charging it until um, about 70% or so. I thought that felt to be the sweet spot because if I charged it to 50%, I had pretty good range, but it wasn't always quite enough to skip the next charging session or, or station. And I found that this thing had, you know, if I just waited a couple more minutes, I could get it up to 70%. I could run and grab some food. And I was actually taking a very e-tron-like approach where I was charging it a little bit deeper and skipping charging stations. Now, if you want the fastest possible road tripping time and chargers are right next to the highway, maybe you charge it to 35, 40% and then pull into the next one dead. That would probably be faster. But here we go. We're going to be finishing up roughly. We're at 95% in 54 minutes, 96 in 54 minutes, pretty much full charges in about an hour. Now you're going to see this thing go quite past one hour. I think it finishes in spoiler one hour 12 minutes something like this but those last few percent take a really long time and that's not uncommon we're doing 28 kilowatts at 98 percent and then it just walks its way down so i'll let that screen finish off for you so you can see everything um but overall we delivered a lot more uh, battery pack energy or a lot more energy than the battery pack could take and that's purely because of um, losses here. It's a 105.6 kilowatt hour usable. We have 114 usable, but with these 400 volt system architectures, you got to dump the current and there's just a lot of losses with the more current that you have. Uh, also heats things up in transmission, but I will say I've never really had major overheating issues. This charging curve was very similar that I, to what I saw on the road trip where the car would taper throughout the whole thing. So overall, the BMW iX charges okay it's literally about as good as you can get from a 400 volt car now the rivian will charge at uh 220 kilowatts versus 195 both are 400 volt system architectures the rivian's a bit higher voltage that'll go up to 450 volts and you can see here we're at 427 uh pretty much full and that's 427 charging voltage pretty much full so the rivian's a little bit higher system voltage for a 400 volt pack, I think that's smart, especially for this big battery. I would have loved to seen BMW do that actually, to step the voltage up a little bit more in this pack. I don't think it was worth the compromise of spending all the money to go up to an 800 volt architecture. It has more than enough thermal capacity for road tripping and hot weather. It has more than enough thermal capacity for driving it pretty hard. And overall, I think it's it's fine. That's my impression of this. The charging is not, you're not going to present the car to someone and say, this charges so fast. It's like a Lucid Air or a Tycon, but you're never going to go and say, oh, I wish it charges faster. This is more than acceptable. As long as you can find the hardware that can output the power for it. Again, a lot of the existing hardware in the ground has 350 amp limitations in it, but a lot of the new stuff going in can go up to 500 amps. So there you have it. It's about a full charge in an hour and 11, hour and 12 minutes in the BMW iX. Uh, I felt that BMW did a nice job. It's typical, easy. You just pull in dead, ride the wave until you can just about make it to the next charging station. As soon as you say, okay, I've tapered and I can make it to the next station, unplug, hammer down, good efficiency, great driver assistance overall a more than acceptable charging curve. So there's my quick thoughts on how the iX charges. I'm pleased with it. Um, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it helps in your buying decision if you're comparing this car to others. I'll also be testing EQS SUV next week. 
and um, Rivian R1S coming up. So all of the electric SUV battle we need to arrange towards the end of the year. Charging will be a big component of it because this is where a lot of the cars are separated. And yeah, can't thank you enough for watching another out of spec reviews video. Just a quick one nerding out about the charging curve, but we'll see you on another one soon. Bye-bye.